Hair loss is a significant concern for nearly 40% of the population. And until recently, treatment options have been limited. However, this may all be about to change thanks to a preliminary animal study published in Frontiers in Pharmacology, which investigated the use of deoxyribose gel for hair growth. In this study, researchers applied a deoxyribose-based gel to mice with testosterone-driven hair loss. After several weeks, they observed notable hair regrowth. Now, why is this so important? Currently, the oral medications for hair loss have serious side effects and even topical treatments can be either expensive or only moderately effective in terms of slowing hair loss. Now, deoxyribose is a natural compound and it has fewer potential side effects. It's relatively inexpensive and it's available over the counter. It's a naturally occurring sugar that is known as the D in DNA, and it plays a key role in several cellular processes. So how does this work? It appears that deoxyribose stimulates the growth of new blood vessels, new cells, and can accelerate wound healing. The authors of the study think that increased blood vessels may be the key to stimulating new hair growth. Hair growth is very closely tied to blood flow, and an improved circulation can end up with the hair being thicker and longer. The rationale behind using a gel was to slow down the release and give more exposure to the area to deoxyribose. To make the gel, researchers used sodium alginate, which is a long-chain sugar that's often derived from brown seaweeds. This substance holds onto water and creates a gel-like mixture when it's hydrated. This allows deoxyribose to gradually be released over a longer period of time, rather than just all at once. Studies showed that the gel would continue to release deoxyribose for up to seven full days. So now what's next? Well, this is a very exciting finding, but it's important to realize that this study was conducted on animals, and much more research is going to be needed. Larger studies would also be necessary to evaluate risks and possible side effects. It's worth noting that this study involved only a very small sample of rats, and there's absolutely no guarantee that the results will translate well to humans. And it was also only used for testosterone-driven hair loss and it may not be applicable to other causes of hair loss. So who knows if these results will apply broadly or not. As for the future of research of deoxyribose, I'm concerned about a lack of funding. It's a natural compound and it can't be patented. This makes it much less attractive to large pharmaceutical companies who would typically be the ones funding such studies. Without much of a potential for profit, it's not clear whether these large studies would even take place. Another reason that no one's willing to pay for a trial could be that if the study fails to show positive results, well, now you're worse off than if you didn't do the study at all. You can still sell a product without much data behind it, but if you prove that that product doesn't work, well, it's gonna be a lot harder of a sell. Still, time will tell what the future holds for deoxyribose gel as a hair growth treatment. While it may be too early to make any definitive claims right now, the initial findings are promising. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Frank Chopatini with Cervetti, and I'll see you next time.